Hello again YouTube and welcome back to part 6 I believe now in the uh, RPG from scratch tutorials. I wanted to start this out by again um, recommending this book um, for, for uh, XNA development by Kurt J Jagers I believe his name is and I wanted to go ahead and give credit where credit was due because I will be heavily referencing um, uh, this book and, and the subsequent tutorials in, in this series. Um, without without his insights in the in this book uh, is probably this tutorial wouldn't be possible and uh again like i said i'm i'm new to the programming i'm still in school and everything so um this is a learning experience as much for for me as it is for some of you guys that may be watching these tutorials but um I, again I, like i said uh I, the 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 subsequent tutorials um will be referencing uh, Kurt Jager's book, XNA 4.0 Game Development by Example. It's a great book. Uh, I would highly suggest reading it and picking yourselves up a copy. It's full of great stuff and it's actually what we are going to be uh, referencing and basically we're going to be building our game kind of around uh, one of the concepts and one of the concepts that we're actually going to be building our game around is uh, uh, his chapter, chapter 8, Gemstone Hunter. I've actually read this chapter now about four times and uh, he actually incorporates the uh, Windows forms into XNA uh, to develop the, the, the tile, uh, the map editor, and uh, that's really what I was having trouble with, and, and, that, and the, the whole concept of uh, object-oriented programming is uh, a bit new to me as well. I'm used to procedural programming, and actually in QBASIC is what I first started in, so the whole object-oriented revolution is a bit new to me, but that's enough on that. Um, what I wanted to start doing is is getting into uh, getting into this, and uh, I'm not going to show you everything on this book. But what I did want to do is I wanted to reference this um, chapter here and, and make sure I gave credit where credit was due. And uh, ho hopefully, Kurt Kurt won't be too mad at me for uh, for using well, not necessarily using, but definitely referencing his book a whole lot and and um, my my making my RPG for you guys to see and. Uh, and uh, hopefully he won't be too mad at me for that. But um, um, yeah, let's go ahead and let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is, uh, well, I, I've already created the RPG Concept 1 in Microsoft Visual Studio, and uh, this is using XNA, and what I basically did was uh, when you load up XNA, um, you, you create a new project, and it's a Windows uh, Game 4.0, I believe it's called, and uh, th this generates some pre-compiled, pre well, not pre-compiled code, but it, it generates some code for you. And uh, this is the structure of XNA, and uh, this is a kind of force the structure of uh, 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 frames per second, about 60 frames per second. And uh, as you can see, hopefully you can see this, we can dock this uh, debug, debug window here, we can hide this for now. And uh, we can look at the code. Um, as you can see up here, you, you have your uh, your game class, and uh, you do most of your initializations right here. And uh, this obviously this initializes a graphics device manager called Graphics and a sprite patch called Sprite Patch. And uh, basically, I just want to give you a basic overview of what what it generates. You put your initialization logic here. It's actually all documented, as you can see with these comments. You can get a good view for for what most of this stuff does. And at any rate, uh, you have load content, unload content. That's for well, the load content obviously you do sprite batch, and you can actually load your textures in this way. Um, we'll, we'll we'll get into that in a little bit here. Uh, the unload content is if you have really, really big maps and you have to unload some of your loaded content to, to progress due to memory limitations. Uh, the update, this is called um, uh, once every 60 seconds, I believe, and uh, this is where all the updating takes place, and they actually separate separate out the, the updates. The updates would be like uh, if a player dies, you do get updated here, you handle... Um, player input here you you handle uh, updating animations and all that stuff here unless you put pack it into another class and then they actually separate out the draw method here and this gets called once per um, once per frame um, and and they generally try to do it 60 60 frames a second and so your your update in, in a perfect world your update will get called every once every every frame so you, you'll you'll have this being called one um, um, 60 times per second, so once every 
sixtieth of a second. And uh, but if things get too com complex, they'll they'll opt to to uh, call the update before they call the draw because you have to update before you draw. Um, otherwise, you're drawing um, the same thing over and over again, and that wouldn't be um, c conductive to to the game at all. But uh, at any rate, I just wanted to give you a general overview of uh, what happens when you create a new game. I, I created a new Windows 4.0 game named it RPG Concept 1 and it generates all this good stuff for us here. So uh, what we'll do here is what we're actually going to end up doing is we're going to take this um, um, th th this 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 solution here, this RPG Concept 1, this will actually handle our game logic. So what we want to do is we want to kind of separate things out um, for the RPG itself, and um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the terminology. It's generally called a tile map, or a tile engine rather, and uh, we're going to separate that out into a completely separate project. And what this will allow us to do is use the same tile engine to draw the tiles to our level editor, and it'll also allow us to use that same code over again without having to, to um, copy and paste it basically to use in this game here, um, the RPG 1 concept. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on solution and we are going to add, um, I'm sorry, we're going to right click on RPG concept here and we're going to add a solution. Uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna. <laughs> I'm still a little bit new to this, as you can see. We're gonna click the solution up here where it says two projects, add, and we're gonna do a new project. Okay, that works much better. And when this comes up, what we want is a Windows game library. And we're gonna name this down here, we're gonna name this our TILE GameGINE.CS. I'm not positive if you actually needed the tile engine.cs, but at any rate. Um, also, what I wanted to do is we're going to load in our content here as well. Um, for the RPG1 concept, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and, and we're going to put in um, some content references here. And uh, that's this folder here. And what we'll do is we're going to add a new, new folder, and we're going to name this textures. Yes. And what this allows us to do is add our source image that we created in GIMP in the previous um, tutorials. It's an existing item, and I believe I have it saved on the desktop. Let me find it here for you guys. It's in the desktop, I believe, under uh, RPG, I believe it was. Land Sea Source, that was it, I hope. And that adds Land Sea Source.png. And what this allows us to do is we can actually copy this over to our um, to our tile engine class where we'll actually use that um, in, in subsequent tutorials. But what I wanted to do now is for the tile engine class, what we want to do is we want to define a uh, a, a class th that um, basically defines the contents of a cell and. Um, We'll do that by right clicking on the tile engine and we will add a new class down here like this and we're going to name this map cell content cs and we'll add that to our project here and what this does is it basically gives us a shell of our class um, and uh, the reason I named it map cell content is because our, our multi-dimensional array which is basically um, yeah, you can you can kind of view that as a uh, spreadsheet um, where e each of the um, cells are referenced basically with the Cartesian coordinate system like I showed you guys in the previous tutorials um, but it, it references each element by uh, uh, an X and a, and a Y and that'll be 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, a positive X in the right direction, positive uh, or Y in the down direction. 
and that allows us to store uh, it'll, it'll allow us to store these map cell content objects um, in, in, inside the, uh, the the cells of the the um, Excel project, if you will, it'll basically be inside the multi-dimensional array. It'll be a multi-dimensional array of map cell content objects. Now, um, the the idea behind uh, the the idea behind the class is a class represents an object. So, with this class, we're representing map cell content objects. And uh, what we're going to do is we want this to be be able to be saved to the disk. So we're going to add a directive to the compiler telling it that it's serializable. And you see this comes up real nice and easy. Just double click it and it comes up and you put it in brackets like that. That tells the, co the, the compiler that the class, we're actually going to um, change this to public as well. Public class map cell content. And what that basically tells the compiler is that we want to be able to in the future take these um, map cell content objects and turn them into a bit stream which basically um, as Kurt says it basically grabs the the in memory representation in, in your RAM it, it grabs that representation of these objects these map cell content objects and it turns them into um, um, basically a bit stream which is zeros and ones I, 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 I'm, I'm assuming and it allows you to save that to your hard disk and what that allows us to do is be able to save these um, map cell content objects to and from um, to the hard drive and be able to load them um, from the hard drive as well so uh, I think I'm starting to run out of time I think I got enough time to, to keep on going a little bit here but um, uh, what we want to do now is basically define what map cell content actually is, and uh, what we want, want what we want this to do is is represent basically um, the content of each of the the cells in the map. So if you view the world map as a, a, a grid um, that's bigger than your monitor, um, the the map cell content objects will represent what each um, cell in, in that world grid um, will contain and uh, um, so what we'll do here is, is we'll start by by defining some uh, defining some variables for this class and uh, actually I think what I'm going to do is uh, sign off because I believe I'm out of time I'm not positive I, I didn't pay attention to the starting time on this but um, in the next tutorial we'll go ahead and, and start fleshing out this class so that we can um, get an idea of what the map cell content objects will will be um, thanks for watching guys and seeing you in the next uh, in the next tutorial